Hello coders, this is Jared from Renaissance Coders and today we are going to cover the creation of the AI that we introduced in our intro video. This process is probably going to take two or three videos because we're going to focus on the level setup first and then try and get all of the scripting and testing done in the second video. So this video is primarily going to focus on setting thing, everything up and making sure that you have all the assets that you need before you start. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to start our, set, our setup process. As I said in the introduction video, we're going to be using several of Unity's standard assets for this tutorial. We're doing this because we really want to make an AI video that's easy to follow and that anyone can easily reproduce. And so by using standard assets from Unity, you know, we you should already have the animations, you'll have the character models, you'll have a few scripts that we're going to be using. You know, so you're going to have a lot of stuff that's really useful that won't take a lot of, you know, duplication time. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the standard assets that we're actually going to be using. The standard assets that we're going to be using are located in this, inside of the standard assets directory and then inside of characters, third person characters, character, excuse me, and then inside of prefabs. Okay, as you can see there are two prefabs inside of this directory, the third person controller and the AI third person controller. Essentially these two items are going to be our characters in the game. The third person controller is just going to be the player in the game and the AI third person controller is going to be the AI in the game that we're creating really quickly. Okay, so what we can really do here is we can go ahead and drop our third person controller into our scene. And so I'm just going to drop this guy over in this corner. Don't really want him on top of the wall there. Make sure he is pretty close to the ground there. Okay, so I've gone I've gone ahead and I've dropped my player into the scene. Now with this controller, a main camera is required. So I'm going to go ahead and add an add a camera to the scene. I'm going to tag this main camera. Now I'm just going to position this behind the player. And I'm using this um, camera preview window over here as my preview. Or, you know, so that way I can see where the camera is actually going to end up. I'm just going to try and center it a little bit behind him, maybe move it down a little bit. Then I'm just going to rotate it forward a little bit. There we go. Okay, and I'm actually going to put the camera inside of this character, um, inside of this character, so that way it's just going to always follow the character. Okay, the next thing we need to add to our scene is the AI, okay, and we really want to add this pretty early on so that way we know what we're working with. And I'm just going to drop this guy right out here in the middle of you know all of these buildings and I did want to point out really quickly that we went ahead and developed a really quick level. Um, essentially all we have here is a plane, um, four cubes as walls, and then a bunch of cubes just sort of spacing everything out a little bit. And then we have sp spheres acting as our waypoints. Okay, so when I zoom in, and I'm just going to press the F keys to zoom in really quickly, um, or focus on this character, when I look at this guy, he looks just like the character, in the, or just like the player in the game. And we don't really want that. What we want is something that looks different from the player, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two materials for this AI. And to do that, I've created a materials directory. Again, to create a directory, you just do a right-click, create folder, and to create a material, I'm going to right click create material. Okay, I'm going to name this basic AI body. Okay, and I'm going to create this as a specular setup. So the shader will be set to specular setup. And I'm going to change the albedo color to a red. There we go. And then I'm going to leave the specular black. I'm going to add my normal map which should be the Ethan normals, which comes with the standard assets. And then I'm going to add my occlusion map, which again comes with the standard assets. I want to create one more material here for the glasses. And this one is not going to be, or actually I need to name it first, so I'm going to just name this basic AI glasses. Okay, and I'm going to leave this shader as standard. I am going to change the color again to a, a slightly brighter red here and I'm going to up the metallic value 
Okay, so we're going with about 0.75 there. And we do need to add the normal map again. And the, oh, not height map, occlusion map. Okay, and now what we want to do is we want to add these, add these to our AI. And to do that, you click on your AI, and then you're just going to toggle the drop down and click on body. And then I'm just going to add my basic AI body to this, which replaces the other material that was on there. And then I'm going to click on glasses, and I'm going to drop the basic AI glasses material, again, replacing the, the one that was currently there. And as you can see, you know, this is just, um, it looks a little more plastic, which is kind of what I was going for with the, um, you know, some of the shading on this. You know, he doesn't look like he's real, kind of like a doppelganger type thing. So that's kind of what I was looking for. And the glasses just look pretty cool and they're pretty metallic there. So that's kind of cool. So the next thing we need to do here is we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to add another collider to this AI controller. And that, this collider is going, to be a, is going to be a sphere collider. So I'm going to add component, physics, sphere collider. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move this up a few places. Yeah, and when you move it up, it will disconnect from the prefab and that's fine. Um, because we're not going to be using the old prefab. Essentially what we're doing is we're generating a new prefab now, or we're going to create a new prefab from this in a little bit. So, okay, with this new sphere collider, I definitely want this to be set to trigger because I already have another collider on there. And if one of the colliders is not set to trigger, you can definitely run into some crazy behavior. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to up the radius to 10. And I'm doing that because I really want this to be sort of our enemy's detection range. So if the player enters into this detection range, then the AI will react. Okay, so just a few more things for the setup before we get into um, the next video, which will be the coding. Okay, so for this level, it is really, really important that you, that you use a nav mesh because most of the movement is, to, is dependent on having a nav mesh agent on the characters, okay? So to do a nav mesh, and I'll go ahead and just show you the nav mesh that I have here that I've already generated. And to generate a nav mesh, what you really want to do is you want to create your environment and then if it's kind of nice if you add it under a tag like under an empty game object like this and then you can just go to bake and you can usually just bake like that. And essentially there, there are a lot of different things that you can um, play with in this, but usually the basic settings are pretty good depending on you know how large your um, game objects are. So if you do everything way out of scale, the basic values may not work for you. So once you have everything in place, you would think, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and start coding. Well, instead of doing that, what I would encourage you to do is go and look at these scripts that we currently have here. And these scripts are essentially going to be what we're going to be adjusting or modifying you know, when we're at developing our version of the AI. So this is the basic move script that comes with the standard asset, and it's called AI Character Control. And I'm just gonna zoom in on this really quickly so you can see it a lot better. And essentially all this script does is move the AI towards a location. Okay, and you can see we're requiring two components, and the the require component simply means that the script, the game won't play unless those components are on the character. We're also using this namespace unity standard assets .characters .third person, and that's really pulling from the third person scripts and you know a lot of the stuff that they've already done. So we're gonna definitely need to use that again in the future. And then again, you can see we're using the nav mesh agent, so you definitely have to have that nav mesh. And then we've got a third person character, and that's the character. That's the script that we're going to take a look at in just a minute, but I just want to show you what this script is doing. So essentially all this script is doing is it only has a start update and a set target method. Okay, and so what's happening here is we're setting, we're initializing everything in start. In update, we are checking to see if the target is not equal to null, and if it's not equal to null, then we are setting the destination of the nav mesh agent, and then we're using a move method that is located in the other character script. Okay, and if we don't have a target, then no, then the AI is idle, so the idle animation will play here. Okay, so let's open up the other script here so we can just take a quick look at this. Okay, when you first load this up, you're gonna look at a lot of different uh, variables and you know how everything's being set up and 
don't get too worried about that. You know, we're really looking to see, you know, how this works. And essentially a lot of these variables are just setting like the, the movement speed, the turning speed, um, the, the distance to check for the ground, um, you know, just a lot of stuff like that. And we're not really concerned as much about that in these videos. So the next thing we're going to take a look at though, is the move method that was referenced in the other script. And essentially this move method just takes takes in three parameters. It takes a vector three, um, which is essentially going to be the position we're moving to, a bull for crouch and a bull for jump. So those bulls essentially are che checking to see, okay, am I crouching or am I jumping? And what this method's going to do is move the character to the vector three in the parameter. Now there's a lot of other stuff going around, going on in here. You know, for example, check ground status. So if it checks the ground status and sees I'm not grounded, then it will play a different animation. So a lot of this is again handling animations, which is really really nice. Um, you know, and really cuts down on a lot of development time or you know initiation time. So. The next thing is, you know, skull, uh, scaling the capsule for crouching. So, you know, that capsule collider that's on the character will be scaled depending on whether you're crouching or not. And that's really important, right? Because if you're crouching but your collider is still extending above your head, then you may still run into whatever's above you. Um, again, a prevent standing in low headroom. That, again, is just keeping your character from randomly standing up and getting stuck or, you know, something like that. And then we've got the update animator method which you know is pretty obvious it's just changing between animations and things like that um, and then I just wanted to show one more the check ground status here we go and essentially this is just using a ray cast from the bottom of the character to check and see you know am I grounded or not and if you are grounded then you know it's gonna do the regular root motions or it's gonna apply the root motion and it's going to play the animations for grounded. So, you know, the normal walk, turns, idles, things like that. If you're not grounded, then usually what you're going to fall into is going to be the falling animation. It won't go to the jump, it's just going to go to the falling animation. So, okay, so that's pretty much what we're going to cover in this script. And we're not going to modify this script at all. We're just going to create a new script that pulls or uses some of this script's methods. Okay, so we're just going to create a smarter AI, if you will, using the scripts that are already given to us. Okay, so that's going to do it for this video. We just wanted to introduce the setup. Um, the next video is going to go into, you know, the actual scripting and creating this new AI. So I hope you guys will definitely check that video out. Um, drop us a like if you like this video and definitely subscribe if you like the series. As always, thanks for watching, and this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial.